Normalization. What is normalization? Normalization consists of a number of steps. Normalization is synonymous with relational database modeling. In other words, normalization is relational database modeling. Normalization is, in general, a process of elimination of duplication from a set of data into specifically identifiable objects. There are five normal forms. First normal form, second normal form, third normal form, and fourth and fifth normal forms. It is recommended that only first and second normal forms are used extensively, and third normal form is used sparingly only when it's necessary. Fourth and fifth normal forms are generally for academics, and in commercial environments, they cause more performance problems than not using them. So what is normalization in terms of normal forms? What is first normal form? First normal form attempts to remove the repetition within data sets by creating one-to-many relationships. Second normal form separates dynamic from static data by creating many-to-one relationships. Third normal form resolves many-to-many -many relationships into unique values. Fourth and fifth normal form go layers further down the net. I don't want to simply dictate what I have on my slides here. I would like to get into a more useful explanation. The descriptions for describing each normal form level, first to fifth, I find extremely complicated. In reality, I find that most developers and database administrators don't really understand what those steps mean, and most normalization is done instinctively by experience. So I'm going to try to demonstrate exactly how these levels of normalization work within the scope of what I think is applicable. First normal form. Looking at the diagram, you can see that the purchase order table on the left has not been normalized because it contains customer details, it contains each purchase order plus the items on each purchase order. In other words, when you go to, say, Amazon and you buy five books, the table on the left would have your address and phone number plus the date that you ordered, when it was shipped, and the total amount plus all the details of each book. The first normal form removes the details of each book into two separate objects. Basically, what you would end up with is the purchase order and the purchase order item. So on the purchase order, you would have the customer address and phone number and details, you, since you ordered the books. In the purchase order item table, you'd have the description of each book. What this effectively does is separates the duplicated information from the purchase order table into two separate tables. That is what I call first normal form, the creating one-to-many relationships. The one-to-many is described by the horizontal line across here, denoting one and only one, and then the many side of the relationship is denoted by the crow's foot, implying that every purchase order, in order for each purchase order to exist, it must have at least one purchase order item, and there can be many purchase order items. In other words, if you place a purchase order with an online book company, you have to order at least one book, but you can order more than one. Second normal form. I like to simplify second normal form in the following manner. On the left, we have the first normal form from the previous diagram. And on the right, we have the same entity structure with second normal form applied to it. Second normal form, in my eyes, removes static information from the purchase order table. I'm the customer. My information is static. If I go on to an online bookstore and I order books 20 times in a year, my name and address is static. They're stored. Each purchase order is not static. There's no reason why I need to store my customer name and address every time in each purchase order. But it's a total waste of space, so I take my address and my phone number and my general details and I push them out into a separate entity. And I end up with a one 
to zero one or many relationship to the purchase order table. This implies that I can have my details stored at Amazon, not that I would want my credit card stored there, but I don't have to actually order any books. That is second normal form. First normal form creates one to many relationships, and second normal form actually creates many to one relationships. Third normal form. You'll notice that this diagram is somewhat greener, as in the first and second normal form diagrams were blue. These are green. The reason why I do this is because anything below second normal form I don't recommend. Third and fourth and fifth normal forms go into far too much detail, and as I already said before, they cause far more problems with performance than were you not to use them. Third, fourth, and fifth normal form cause far more problems with performance than the descriptive detail levels problems that they actually resolve. I would recommend not using third, fourth, and fifth normal form. The only circumstances where third normal form is utilized is where it's actually needed by the application. In modern day applications, typically they're online applications, involves a lot of listings of multiple items at once and selecting individual items occasionally. Where those individual items are selected, that's where you need third normal form. They're rare. So what is third normal form? I like to think of third normal form as a resolution of many to many relationships. In this situation, we have a course and a student. A course at a university can have many students. A student can be enrolled in many courses. The result of this is that there's a many-to-many -many relationship between the course and the student because the course can have many students and the student can have many courses. So how do we find an individual student per course? Well, think about it. Would you ever really want to do that for an application? You might, sometimes. That's why I say third normal form is occasional. Third normal form is generally a many-to-many -many resolution entity, which is what we see here, the course student. All we're doing is we're taking the course ID and the student ID and joining them together into a new entity, which allows us to find that individual item. That's third normal form. You decide whether it's useful or not.